Hello everybody in a little different video for all of you. Now, I'm not on camera because I'm ill with allergies and a cold and god knows what else and also I've just had a shower and I need this video to come out as quickly as possible and if I don't get this video out as quickly as possible, my scheduling will be fucked and I will have to make a video on Thursday, Friday and Saturday in order to make up for you. So, this video is audio only because it's as quick as I can possibly make it. Now, some of you may be expecting this video to be about Red Pill Black, and you would be wrong, as you can probably tell by the title of this video when I make one up, but yeah, uh, I really don't think there's anything to really make on that subject anymore, everything has already been said, and half opinions got there first, so yeah, I won't be covering that, although I will say Paul Joseph Watson's U-turning is very funny. Now, I will be covering the spate of rape allegations that has been in the media. Now, I'm not covering Harvey Weinstein because that is a dumpster fire I am not putting my toes into. However, I will be covering the smaller stories that have come out, but this is more to do with the showbiz side of things, like the David Blaine video before, and I was going to do this based on one particular story, but considering both these stories are from the music world, and from bands that I like, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan, but I like their music. I'm talking, of course, about Marilyn Manson, the band, not the person, and Crystal Castles. Now, who are Crystal Castles? Well, Crystal Castles are a electronic outfit, the more on the lo-fi, aggressive side of things. It's like electronic music with screaming, but not death metal or emo screaming or black metal screaming. It's literally a girl screaming over the top. At least that's what it started out as. Although to say that it was it's all screaming is a disservice to the band. But that was with the former singer known as Alice Glass, who joined up with the now only remaining original member Ethan Kath to record music. And we'll get into that in a little while because there are some things that just don't quite add up. Now basically there was an acrimonious split of sorts and essentially she's left the band and he's replaced her with a new singer called Edith and they've had some back and forth within the press about who wrote what, who was more important. Now she comes across as very bitter, very emotional while he's, well, he's not happy with the things she says but he seems on the whole to be, you know, I've said some things, she said some things but I'm glad that she's decided to make music and I look forward to her solo career and you know he's kind of taking it in a positive stride while she is very much better. And on the other hand we have Marilyn Manson, Twig Ramirez long-standing partner of Marilyn Manson in terms of songwriting and he's been there f through all the highs and lows. Now what is the two things that bind these two bands together in this video? Well both Even Kath and Twiggy Ramirez have been accused of rape. Now, on the one hand, Ethan Kath is, let's be honest, he is right in saying he is the primary musical force in that band. He might not write all the lyrics, that's up for debate, but all the music is his. He writes the music that the women sing over. Whether or not they write their own vocal melodies or lyrics is whatever. Not relevant, but he is the main thing that binds it all together. It was his idea in the first place. Twiggy Ramirez is a similar role, but he's not as important as Marilyn, because Marilyn is, of course, the central figure. It is his band. He is the one who hires and fires musicians, and unfortunately for Ramirez, the accusation alone from an ex-partner has meant that he has lost his job in the band, despite having pretty much wrote some of those biggest hits they've ever had, and they've these two have been friends for decades. On the other hand, what we also hit, see here is the power of an allegation, and we'll get to the allegations in just a little while, there's a lot of reading to cover, but we'll just go through the highlights of the Tugger Ramirez one and cover Alice Glass. Now interestingly enough, very interestingly enough, Alice Glass is actually touring with Marilyn Manson right now, so there's a little bit of a connection there. And what's funny is, on Twitter I provoked the ire of several Alice Glass fans, or at least feminists posing as her fans, or just white knighting for her virtue signalling, and saying that she ended her career, she ruined her career to leave a band that was never big to begin with, they were, they were never billboard topping, they weren't even billboard successful, like they may have reached the top 100, maybe, I don't know, they worked with some esteemed musical guests, but on the whole I would never say they were massive, they never achieved mainstream success, but hey whatever. She can go and release two EPs and tour with Marilyn Manson while these guys are pretty much just 
doing their own thing with a new singer. Also, interestingly enough, for somebody who's supposedly powerless and was abused for a decade, her word alone can get Crystal Castles removed from South by Southwest on the basis that Ethan Kath is not feminist enough. Interesting. So let's get to Twiggy Ramirez first before we get to the main thrust of this video, shall we? Now, Twiggy Ramirez was in a long-term relationship with Jessica Adams, lead singer of a band called Jack Off Jill. I never heard of her, never even heard of the band until recently, but I knew of Twiggy Ramirez, and obviously I know of Marilyn Manson. Interesting. And in this Variety article it states, Longtime bassist for Marilyn Manson, Twiggy Ramirez, has been accused of rape by Jessica Adams, lead singer in the band Jack Off Jill. Adams detailed the alleged assault in a lengthy Facebook post, writing that she and Ramirez entered into a relationship in the 90s when she was 18 that became physically violent in the following months and years. She detailed a pattern of abuse that began with jealousy and escalated into hitting her repeatedly. During a tour break with Nine Inch Nails, who White also played with, the musician allegedly visited Adams at their friend Pete Pete's apartment, he forced me onto the floor with his hand around my neck, she wrote. I said no, I said no. I said it so loud enough that Pete came rushing in the other room to get him off me, but I had been raped. I had been raped by somebody I thought I loved. Now, why the hell would Trigger Ramirez do that in front of somebody else in their own house? Well, he was in the other room. How stupid do you have to be to assault somebody? Now, she doesn't even mention that he'd even penetrated her. He just had his arm around her, his hand around her. That's not rape. Now this Facebook post is very long and this is basically a summary from Variety so if you want to see the full post it will be in the article down below in the description. But she attributes her delay to coming forward with the accusation to warnings from her label that if she went public her band could likely get blackballed by concert promoters, radio programmers and other bands and their managers. The label blatantly feared the big machine behind Marilyn Manson who would use their power to destroy not only Jack Off Jill but my name, Jessica, as well, she wrote. The pressure and guilt of inevitable repercussions of my rape story affecting my band's livelihood, happiness and success kept me silent for years. Which is rather weird because Twig Ramirez has since lost his job. He's been fired. So her fears are unfounded. And it seems to me an excuse for not going to the cops if said rapes and abuse and all sorts of shit that she accuses him of actually happened. This is not a good excuse for reporting said person to the police or phoning a helpline. Also, her band was never that successful. I mean, how many of you have actually heard of Jack Off Jill compared to how many of you have heard of Marilyn Manson? I'm just wondering. Or even Twiggy. I think you will have heard of Twiggy more than her. Adams added that after making vague allusions to her encounter in an interview with Alternative Press magazine, other women came forward with stories of abuse from Wyatt. She ended the post by encouraging other women to come forward and commending men who support women. See? Women. Not other men who get abused. Women. So, there seems to be some kind of ideological thing here, but again, that's probably just me. But the thing is, who are these women? He must have had multiple partners, and what exactly does this mean? Like, how is it abuse? And she only made vague illusions, so how do these people know it's even him that they're talking about? Who are these women? Where are all the citations for this, I'm wondering? For women to own our power, we must stand up for each other. It's the only way we can confront and combat men who think they hold power over us. I am thankful to know that there are men out there who do not share this gross ideology and stand with us. This is an intersectional, uphill battle for women and the men who are scared for their reputation with other men to defend us. I'm sorry, but considering that he's lost his job and everybody is backing you and Alice Glass and you see this as an ideological battle against the evil misogynist patriarchy, I have to wonder, hmm, who's actually got all the power here? I mean, you're a nobody. Twig Ramirez is a much, well, was a much coveted bass player and songwriter. Who the hell are you? That's not an argument, I'm just saying. And you're saying that he destroyed your career? That he abused you? But there's no evidence, this is just your word. And this happened years ago. So you will be able to get him arrested, so I can only assume you're doing this not for ideological reasons per se, but also for a personal issue. Maybe you just want to ruin his career because maybe he didn't help you with yours? Who knows? Again, he could well have raped her, but it doesn't make much sense. She's using this as an ideological thing. This is probably to do with hashtag me too. Hashtag me too has plenty of legit people who are talking about their legit issues and stories, but there are many people who are using that to attack other people. And it would not surprise me if this had happened. And look, Manson even released a statement to Pitchfork and said, I knew Jessica and Jordy had a romantic relationship many years ago and I considered and still consider Jessica to be a friend. I knew nothing about these allegations until very recently and I'm saddened by Jessica's obvious distress. And then later fires his friend that he, he's known for longer. Now, what do I think about this overall? Well, as you can tell, I obviously share some kind of 
skepticism at her claims. None of it really makes sense. She's basically saying that the industry is male dominated, it's patriarchal, and that all this shit is horrible, and women need to work together to fight this intersectional uphill battle. So to me, there's a political side to this, to use him as a scapegoat, and also a personal side of things. They don't get along, I can tell that for a fact, and I can wager that their breakup was probably bad. But again, I'm not a proper fan of her band or his band or what have you, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but that's what I get. This man could be behind bars, if she'd actually reported him to the police. She apparently has a witness to him actually assaulting her, yet nothing has happened. So that's actually her own fault that these alleged other women have been abused by him, if that actually happened. If, of course, any of this has happened and it's not all made up. Now, after this, of course, we know he was removed, and this is what Manson said about this. I've decided to part ways with Geordie White as member of Marilyn Manson. He will be replaced with the upcoming tour. I wish him well. This is a sad day. Well, we know why he did it. One, you're currently touring with somebody who is also going through her own little thing, like his ex, while you also need to get rid of him, so that every time you go on tour and go to a gig, you're not getting attacked. It's kind of weird, like, he could survive the horrible shit that people threw at him during Columbine, but not this. And it's not even him who's the target interesting and then Jordy has since released a brief comment about being let go and he says this simply i wish to spend time with my family and focus on maintaining my several years of sobriety i will be taking a leave of absence from Marilyn manson and regrettably will not be performing on the upcoming tour anyway that's what's happened with tuki ramirez and as you can probably tell i'm very skeptical of public allegations to me and this is a pattern that i've seen all too clear over the last decade these people who go to the public who go to the press and on Twitter and Facebook, rather than the police or domestic abuse helplines, or both, usually have an ulterior motive. There is something other than maybe this actually happened when it didn't happen. There's purely a reason, and it is to mess these men up. This is to ruin them. And this brings me to Alice Glass. Thankfully, her statement isn't as long and hard to read as... Jessica's, and this is what she has to say. Some of you may be aware that I've opened up about my experiences with abuse in the past. I've been very guarded about the information I've given, and I haven't publicly named names, because I've been afraid. I've been threatened and harassed, and as a result, out of fear, I've been silenced. Which is interesting, because she's got a massive platform, she's writing music and lyrics, and isn't exactly a powerless woman, as I mentioned before. She alone, with her word, can remove a band by saying they're not feminist enough. And yet, she's been silenced and she's afraid because she's been threatened and harassed by unknown forces and has never named names and has never seemed to have called the police either. I wouldn't even say that she's opened up. She's just said this has happened and people believe her because, well, this is the real world in which we live in where women are automatically believed and men are not. The momentum that's been created recently by the many courageous women who've been opened up about their own stories has inspired me to finally be more direct at whatever cost. You see, hashtag me too continuously being mentioned there is no coincidence that these are all linked this is my own recovery for the other women who have been are currently or maybe in a similar situation with the man who abused me for years and for those in abusive relationships who are looking to stand up and speak out you see you never mention the lesbians who actually do the worst and most domestic violence yeah it's always the men it's the men at the issue it's such a feminist hashtag it's such a feminist thing to do this is literally just two minutes of blaming men hatred isn't it i met ethan kath real name claudio palmieri when i was in the 10th grade the first time he took advantage of me was when i was around 15. he was 10 years older than me i came to in the back of his car extremely intoxicated from drinks he'd given me that night we didn't talk for months after that he went to great lengths to find me again stalking me and driving me past my high school looking for me he tracked me down and showed up places i was hanging out and we eventually reconnected i was very young and naive in a compromised position in my life i perceived him as a local rock star because i'd seen his band kill cheerleader on tv a lot of my friends from the punk scene had also been taken advantage by much older men so to me it was a situation that had been normalized now that's interesting because if you look on the Wikipedia page in official band history, they didn't meet until 2006 and she was born in 1988, which means she would have been 18, possibly 17 at the time, so may have already left school. Not when she was 15. Now, he was working on a song in 2003, which later became known as Alice Practice, which is an okay song. And it's called Alice Practice because he gave her the music and said, could you write a vocal melody and lyrics for it, please? I've been working on this for years. I need somebody to do this. And thus the band was created. There's no mention of the meeting when she was 15 and he was 25. Nowhere near that at all. It just says that he was working on that song for a couple of years, but it doesn't mean that they met there. That This changes the whole timeline. I would also just like to quickly point out 
that when Ethan Glass was born was not 10 years before Glass in 1978. In fact, he was born in 1982. He's only six years older than her. Now, that doesn't mean what he may have done when she was a minor is wrong. I'm just saying that it drastically reduces the age of these two people even more and perhaps further points to her lying. Now, maybe she's just rounding up, one may say, and that could well be true. But he's not 10 years older. He's not that much of an old man. And she's not far from 30 either. So, again, when she was 17 slash 18, because I'm being generous there, he was, well, my age. Just putting that out there, Alice. Something doesn't add up. Yes, she was in a compromised position. She doesn't say what that compromised position is. Was she having problems at home? Was she just a problem child? Like, she was from a well-to-do family, but had issues. Those girls do exist. Those boys do exist. I don't know what that is. Now, she was the one taking drinks from him when she probably, even though she's 15 and naive, you you taught very early on in life to not take candy from strangers. That still applies at 15. Why would she go back with somebody who stalked her and apparently took advantage of her, but you came to in his car extremely toxic, so anything could have happened and you didn't talk for months? None of this makes sense already, but let's move on. Claudio was very manipulative towards me. He figured out my insecurities and exploited them. He used the things he learned about me against me over a period of many months, gave me drugs and alcohol and had sex with me in an abandoned room at an apartment he managed. It wasn't always consensual, and he remained sober whenever we were together. It sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? But again, like, maybe because I didn't follow the band as much as maybe some other people. They never struck me as a couple. They were just in a band. They were friends. They were professionals. Kind of like Yazoo, an 80s synth pop band of a man and a woman. I don't know. When I was 16 or 17, he gave me a CD of songs and asked me to write and sing over them in 2006. So she would have been 18 at the most not 16. I took the songs home and wrote lyrics and melodies and we recorded the tracks I liked, but even with music, he created a toxic environment that I often felt I had to go along with. While recording our first EP, the recording engineer sexually harassed me while we were in the studio. Claudio laughed at me and pressured me to go along with it. He called our first single, Alice Practice. I said my vocals were a mic test. He concocted that story and told the press it was an accidental recording, intentionally diminishing my role in its creation. It was another way of putting me down and preying on my insecurities. Again, this is just your word. And what do you mean by sexually harassed? Did he slap your ass? Did he say something? What did he do? Again, it's all vagaries and it seems too good to be true in many ways. Like, this is very detailed. And again, it doesn't go with the official timeline of the band. She wouldn't have been 16 in 2006 because she would have to be born in 1990. She wasn't. Some of it does align with the official history, but she's just saying that Claudio is lying about that and saying it was just concocting stories. Now, let's be honest, band members do routinely create white lies about each other constantly and take credit for things that they didn't do but there's nothing to suggest that he was manipulating you. Soon after we were invited to tour the UK I was overwhelmed by how quickly things were happening for us and Claudio convinced me to drop out of high school only two credits away from graduation. As we started to gain attention he began abusively and systematically targeting my insecurities and controlling my behaviour, my eating habits, who I could talk to, where I could go, what I could say in public and I was allowed to wear. It kept me from doing interviews or photo shoots unless he was in control of the situation. Our fame grew in Crystal Castles but he didn't feel he was getting the recognition he thought he deserved. Typical art shit. Like, every artist doesn't think they get the recognition they deserve. You still went ahead with all this, even though you know, or at least you claim to know, that he did all these things to you before, and when he was stalking you. None of this adds up. How did he even find you? Why did you agree to enter some kind of relationship with... None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense at all. He became physically abusive. He held me over a staircase and threatened to throw me down it. He picked me up over his shoulders and threw me in onto concrete. He took pictures of my bruises and posted them online. I tried to leave and he swore that it would never happen again. He would never physically abuse me again. More severe psychological and emotional abuse took his place. Now, you see, if these things were posted online, send us a link. Surely they're there somewhere and they must be on some kind of forum or website like you must have a link to that that is evidence you should show us that evidence in fact you could send that to the police and have him arrested and destroy the band but you didn't and even then with the high school thing you make it out like oh he's potentially risking your future when you guys were literally full-time musicians making money from that you technically didn't need it and as we've seen 10 years later you're fine right now you're you're touring with one of the most successful rock musicians ever. He controlled everything I did. I wasn't allowed to have my own phone or my own credit card. He decided who my friends were, read through my private emails, restricted my access to social media, regulated everything I ate. 
He berated me and yelled at me, telling me I was a joke, that all the people that came to our shows were only interested in his instrumentals, and that I was ruining the band. He broke glass shower doors to frighten me, he locked me into rooms, he told me that my feminism made me a target for rapists, and only he could protect me. He forced me to have sex with him, or he said I won't be allowed to be in the band anymore. Yet he let you leave in 2014. To be honest, he's kind of right. If he did say that, that your feminism would make you a target for rapists, as we now see recently. Hell, even murderers. But again, all of this is just your word. We don't know what's going on. There's two of you. There's no witnesses to any of this. He claims to have witnesses, which I'll get into. There's just something not right about this. Again, I'm not a psychologist. Maybe this is how people act. But again, people, think about this logically. Does it work? Does, does this make any sense? Again, I don't know if he's telling the truth or she's telling the truth. Even though I'm more sceptical of her because she's public about it. If she'd actually filed a police report, I would be less sceptical. But let's just continue. I was miserable and my lyrics indirectly spoke to the pain and the pressure that I was enduring. But as, as it was sometimes the case in abusive relationships, the cruelty was often followed by kindness. He was very good at keeping his terrible treatment of me private. He was charming sometimes. He was hyper-protective. And most of all, I loved the band we had together. Okay? You don't sound like you loved it. You sound like you have similar issues with recognition and creative control and things like that. You don't sound like you like it or love it. But he often told me how replaceable I was. He'd even tell me that he was actively looking for someone to replace me. He kept me insecure and on an edge. And then would tell me that he was the only one in the world that believed in me. He told me it was us against everyone because everyone else thought I was a loser, a joke, a talentless dancing clown. I believed him. I was suicidal for years, but nobody did. I didn't. The fans don't. Even people who dislike you probably didn't think you were that bad. Leaving Crystal Castles was the single most difficult decision I've ever made. That band was everything to me. My music, my performances and my fans were all I had in the world. I gave that up and started over not because I wanted to, but because I had to. As difficult as it was, I knew that leaving was one of the best decisions I've ever made. It's taken me years to recover from enduring almost a decade of abuse, manipulation, psychological control. I'm still recovering. Well, you make it sound like you guys are in some kind of relationship, not a friendship, and he abused you in this band for years, yet he let you leave. He didn't have to let you leave. He locked you up in that apartment and we would never hear of you again. None of this makes any sense. But anyway, let's go to the statement that Ethan released, aka Claudio. And this was posted on Pitchfork, which to be honest, this entire article is nothing but about glass. And this is what he says. I am outraged and hurt by the recent statements made by Alice about me and our prior relationship. Her story is pure fiction and I consulted my lawyers as to my legal options. Fortunately, there are many witnesses who can and will confirm that I was never abusive to Alice. Now, what is interesting is that, yes, he has said certain things about her creatively and talent-wise in public. Like, he has actually said that she wasn't the most important member, that he was the most important member, but then he took it back and became very diplomatic about these things. Everything is in the description box down below, but there's no evidence that he actually said it to her, to her face. Now, we've seen this before, like, Pete Townsend, long after Keith Moon died, has actually been downplaying his role recently. And we've also seen Mick Jagger and Keith Richards talk about each other, mainly Keith Richards, Peter Hook from my favourite band ever, New Order, downplaying not necessarily the other two's roles, but the other person in the band, uh, Gillian Gilbert, the wife of the drummer, saying that she was a shit musician, even though she helped write and record some of the most amazing songs they ever released. But hey, whatever. Apparently she was a terrible musician that didn't come up with any ideas. When we know some of this shit isn't really beyond the pale of any band. Like when they fall out and they will attack each other and downplay each other's roles. But this abuse thing, I don't know. And the fact that she didn't go to a police, she didn't try and find a way out. She actively engaged with this person. If she is to be believed, just makes me question some things. This all seems to stem from Kesha as well. Like she had a similar thing, but it turned out that the man was innocent but in a court of law and she had to drop one of the cases what does this mean about showbiz what does this mean about all the others going on recently with hashtag me too harvey weinstein feminism stuff like that well it's the power of an allegation isn't it now i don't know if anybody's telling the truth i have to reiterate this constantly i have no idea i might be more skeptical about one person than another but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're lying experience suggests that both these women are lying because whenever they go public and not to the police, like Mattress Girl, UVA, Duke Lacrosse, things like that, it turns out to be false all the time. And we know that women will lie about these things for the littlest of reasons. But I don't know. But it shows the power of an allegation. These alleged victims, these so-called powerless women, can get men fired. They can get them removed from venues that they were going to play on the basis of their feminism, even though he's 
never claimed to be a feminist as far as I know. And yet they're powerless victims that for years had to suffer abuse. And yet they left these relationships, but now these men are going to suffer. Now it doesn't matter if they're guilty or innocent. The fact that remains is that these men will forever be known as rapists by these women and by members of the public. And it just seems just all a bit too suspicious that all these stories are coming out. Why now? Why this hashtag? Why after Weinstein? Why after all this shit? Just doesn't add up. And why so publicly? Yes, there are some people who are just talking about their experiences that are true, but there's so many people just announcing these things that have happened with no evidence and many years apart. It's just all suspicious to me. But anyway, I will just be continually repeating myself over and over again. I truly don't know what the hell is going on. All I know is unless these women have evidence to back up their claims, then there's nothing they can do. And especially since in the case of both of these women, the statute of limitations in America, but I don't know about Canada, is pretty much over. So Jessica can't really do anything to Twiggy except ruin his reputation, which is what I think this was probably all about because she can't get him arrested. So until next time, guys, remember to trust but verify. Don't blindly believe everything that you see in the media, even about the feminists, even about these male feminists who have been outed as sex offenders and things like that. Believe the ones that have been proven to be true, who have been arrested and charged when investigations have been proven to show that these men are what they have been accused of. But in the cases of, say, like Tyler Malka, where on the one hand this woman says that he was this massive creeper, which may or may not be true, I mean, that's a creepy thing, but then says that she entered the relationship with him not too long afterwards. Yeah, you might want to be a bit skeptical about that, guys. So, until next time, I'll see you later. It's been your boy. <laughs> Thank you.